because it's Christmas season and we're talking about angels or the ones who made the announcement, it's kind of as intriguing to me. And so last week uh, we talked a little bit about the uh, the experience of angels. And uh, and I told you some of my angel stories. In other words, some of my encounters with I've never seen an angel, at least not with wings. Uh, we talked a little bit about Pat McKee makes a great clearance, you know, for like, you know, from the, uh, the it's a wonderful life. But um, angels are real. And last week, I think we established that. And, uh, with, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess we're releasing the children now. Thank you. You guys need to have a, we need to have a flashing sign up there. <laughs> So real quickly, what I want to do uh, right now is I want to. Last week we focused on uh, angels as far as some of the stories, and I told you some personal stories. Uh, if you didn't get to hear that one, um, then you can go back. It's online. Uh, it's on our website. Uh, we have a Facebook page, um, and it, there's also an email. So you can you can listen to that one, and it kind of gets you fired up and excited about angels in your life. Some of you have told me stories this week about your encounter with angels. Now remember, angels don't have to have wings, and we're going to talk today a little bit more about the they can take on human form. In fact, they can even take on other forms to perform God's will and God's purpose in our lives. And I'm going to tell you a story about a... Uh, about a, At the very end, I'll tell you a story about a train... It almost wrecked with Queen Victoria on it. And God used a, well, wait, just wait. Got to leave you hanging a little bit. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's just review real quickly kind of what we looked at last week. As I told you, I took you from Genesis to Revelation and left out probably hundreds of angel stories and angel appearances and how God used people. We hit the high points. So quickly in pictures, let's just review where we went last week. Uh, we talked about angels among us, with, you know, the soldiers. Told you some stories about soldiers that I know who have encountered angels and that got them through the battle, gave them strength and courage, all right? And uh, for any of those of you that have been soldiers, this uh, picture means a lot to you because you've been here, all right? Um, then we talked about how Lucifer fell from heaven. He was the most beautiful angel of all, remember? But angels are created beings because today we're going to talk about what, do, what are angels? What do they look like? Do they have wings? What's their purpose? Um, give us a little more detail about what the Bible says angels are. Okay? Then we have the Garden of Eden, where we have the guardian angel that stuck, uh, you know, swung his sword and kept them from coming back into the garden. Uh, another whole story there. Uh, Abraham, when he saw the three men, this picture is misrepresented and it shows wings. I believe it was uh, angels in the form of men. Okay? Then we went to... Uh, Jacob wrestling with uh, angels, right? He wrestled with this angel because he said, I'm not going to let go of you until you bless me. Have you ever felt that desperate in your life where it's like, boy, Lord, if you don't, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, you can cripple me all you want, right? And then we have the dream, Jacob's ladder. And Jacob, uh, you know, the whole thing, he saw them ascending and descending up and down. And I've talked to people who were dying and they saw this very exact thing. He saw angels going up and down the, la the, the golden streets or the golden stairs to heaven. All right? And then <clears throat> we talked about the protection of angels and how uh, <clears throat> God used an angel to shut the mouth of these lions. Now, it's kind of an interesting story there. When, when uh, the king really he kind of cut his own throat, he made this decree. Whoever does, doesn't you know, bow down to us and all of this, let him be thrown in the lion's den. Well, old Daniel... He wasn't about to bow down to, you know, the idol and all that. So, you know, he says to him, he says, well, uh, he puts him in the light. Then the next morning he comes out there and he says, hey, did, he say, did your God save you? And I, I, you know, he's, up, he's hoping there's not a belt, right? And uh, uh, anyway, he said, I'm here because the angel of the Lord protected him. Stories like that all throughout the Bible, how God did that. Next and then this is the story of Elisha, remember, when he couldn't see in the unseen realm and they were... The, the army was coming against the city and they were just a huge army surrounding them. And this servant of Elisha was scared to death. And remember, he said, what are we going to do? And Elisha said, oh God, open his eyes to see what I see. And he opened his eyes. And in this picture, you can only see a bank of fiery chariots and angels. But it went all the way around. 
All right? And when he saw that, he's like, oh, we got this. <laughs> We're in good shape. But what we need to understand is that this is not, uh, this is not just for Elisha and his servant. We have this unseen realm battling for us every day of our lives, thank God. And uh, I have an extra couple legions of angels watching out for me because it's necessary. All right. All right. Uh, next, one. <clears throat> then we have the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, the Judgment Angels, where you know this. Uh, they came into the city, two of them, and said, "There's going to be, you know, we're going to wipe this city out for the sake of Lot and Abraham's prayer." The angel got him out of the city and wiped out the city by fire and judgment. As Lot's wife looked back, became a pillar of salt. And by the way, in, in Israel. There's a certain place where Sodom and Gomorrah was, where there's a big pillar of salt. And you can, they'll actually show you that if you go on an Israel uh, trip. Pretty cool. All right. And then uh, we talked about the, then the New Testament where the angels came and they, they said, I bring you good tidings of great joy. This is the Christmas season where he said, I'm going to bring you the child of the living God that comes to save the world is coming to you. And so they made this announcement to these poor old shepherds that were out in the field by night. Scared him half to death, and he said, Fear not, which is what almost every angel says when he appears. And by the way, don't be offended by this, but you can study it yourself. Every time an angel appears, it's always in the masculine form. Now, does that mean God's a chauvinist? No. But we always see a lot of pictures, even some that I'll show, will show a very feminine angel. And I think it's because we this mother's heart, you know, a mother, or we say, Boy, she just looks like an angel, or he sings like a like an angel, or whatever. She sings like an angel, or she's as pretty as an angel. But angels are always in the masculine form. Okay? And so I'm looking for a, you know, I'm looking for a, a perfect little angel for this tree. I think it would be good. Okay, so then we have, you know, the angel shows up, tells Mary that she's going to have the, the Christ child. Next. And then, uh, uh, this is when he comes to Joseph. Okay, the, the angel comes to uh, uh, Joseph or Zechariah first and then to Joseph. We talked a little bit about that. Thanks. And then when Jesus was tempted in the, in the wilderness and he was struggling, you know, imagine 40 days and 40 nights without food and, and uh, all of this and then and being tempted every day of his life. One temptation in a day is enough to wipe you out. But he was under it every day for 40 days and 40 nights. So the angels came and covered him. The greatest, the darkest night of his life was in the Garden of Gethsemane, all right? And so the angel comes and appears and strengthens him. Go ahead, Dan. Strengthens him, lets him know that uh, this is God's plan. I'm thankful that he didn't call, he could have called legions of angels, right? He could have called thousands upon thousands to come to his aid, but he didn't. Next one. The angel sustains him. He goes to the cross. And uh, next. Then, uh, this is where we see he could have called, you know, Thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions upon millions of angels. I'll show you a verse later. Then it was the angel who rolled the stone away, and then the Bible says that the angel was sitting on the tomb, or on the on the rock that rolled over the tomb, which we think is, I think it's kind of comical and cute. And then the next one. Then he comes to Peter in jail, and he breaks him out of jail, and, and all of that, which we talked a little bit about last week, was the fact that he'll do the same for you and I. When we're in a tight spot, when we're in a pinch, and we can't get out, and there's no way out. He will make a way. And he used God's, used his angel to do it. Next one. Then, um, we talked about how someday, Jesus will come back. It says in Revelation chapter, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, He is coming back with His angels. And there's a verse, that, uh, in that same verse, it says these, this archangel will step out. We'll talk about what the difference is in archangel today. Archangel steps out, blows the trumpet of God, and He comes back with the saints who have died and gone on, and He comes back with the angels and does, does war, actually, and just wipes out the, the enemies of God. Then next one. Then the old forky tail is finally, says that dragon, the devil, was finally put on the chain gang, right? He's put, he chains him up, the angel chains him and throws him into the abyss. He's brought back later and cast into the lake of fire for all eternity. Now today, <clears throat> we're talking about the work of angels. Okay? That, and I told a couple of cool stories last week. Let me tell one this morning, right, before... Uh, we start. I don't tell too many of these, but there's a story of, of the missionary John Patton, and he was a missionary to the New Hebrides. Remember, this was a, a, a kind of a well. It's an island, right? And while he was there, he and his wife had been working there for a while. And on this one particular night, the, the chief of this tribe decided, you know what? We've had enough of this, and they they circled the house with a tribe of people. 
And they brought out guns and ammo and spears and knives and arrows and you name it. And they were going to burn the house to the ground. And it was him and his wife. That was it. Burn the house to the ground. Wipe them out. And that was their determination. All of a sudden, and him and his wife prayed all night. All of a sudden, that entire tribe turned around and ran for their lives. And so they, could, they, they praised God for it. A year later, that chief came to Christ. And having come to the Lord, old uh, John Patton said, he says, uh, Chief, he says, I'm a little confused. He said, you guys had us dead rights. You were going to kill us. You were gonna, he says, we were going to kill you. He says, but where did all those soldiers come from? And he said, there were no soldiers. It was my wife and I. We were scared to death. He says, no. You had a mighty army of soldiers, huge men, big men, standing with swinging swords. He said, and we saw that and we ran for our lives. And so he and the chief together concluded that had to be the angels of God that were protecting. So these are the stories that we're talking about, and I love these stories. But what does the Bible really teach about angels? Who are they? Who are these created beings, these creatures, all right? So the Bible describes them as spirits who can inhabit other forms. Sounds like a Hollywood movie. But we, we've seen it happen, right? We talked about a couple stories last week where people were saved by a man in a tow truck. And it wound up being an angel. So there, the, when, the, when the Bible talks about these angels, it's talking about spirits. And there's different classifications. There's cherubim. There's seraphim. There's archangels. And then it often talks about the host, right? The actual host of, uh, of heaven. So here we have, let me just tell you what this is, and we'll hang on just a second there, Hannah. A host is an army, a mighty army. And so you'll hear the Bible talk a lot of times about the host of heaven. Or Elisha in that story. Behold the host of heaven. The mighty armies of heaven. Why is that significant to you and I? It's significant because you and I have a host of angels always at our disposal, always watching out for us as children of God. And this is one of the reasons why we need to pray. And hello, Washington. Hello, Cincinnati. We don't give a rip. Bring it on. We don't. We will quote Bible verses wherever we want to. We have the hosts of heaven surrounding and protect us. If you kill us, you send us to heaven. We don't care. So, you know what? Position. Take it or leave it. Okay, now, the... Uh, so we have these are God, think of them as God's secret agents. Okay? These are God's Navy SEALs. When it talks about a host in heaven, God has his Navy SEALs. And he makes Navy SEALs look like babies, right? I mean, you can take a Navy SEAL and just ding, ding, not take him right off the planet. Okay, but so it's nothing to him, but this is what they're like. They're God's secret agents. The cherubim, uh, the Bible talks about. Now we, you know, we get the word cherub. So we have these little naked butt babies that fly around with their wings, right? Come on. This is what artists show us, and it's like, you know what? That is not. Do I have another one there, Tim? I don't think I put that. I don't know if I put. No, I put that one. Because I actually have the little cherub you know, these little, these little arrow and shoot them in the, Right? And so that is not what a cherubim is, but that's what the artists have depicted. And we see this, especially through the 1800s and early 1900s. You saw a lot of this. Oh, the cherubim. But the cherubim were actually the guard angels. These are the ones who were, uh, show the next one, this is like the guard, and we've seen this one, but that's that guard angel, that doesn't look like no little uh, naked tail baby to me. He's the one guarding the Garden of Eden. Remember when they had the Ark of the Covenant, where we stored the Ten Commandments, the wings of the cherubims, the cherubim, the wings of the cherubim were to be made and put on top. And so what were they doing? They were guarding the, the law. They were guarding the Ten Commandments. They were, you remember how God took it serious about the Ark of the Covenant. Okay? And so this was, that's what the purpose of a cherubim was, a guard angel. They're guarding against bad, for in your favor, and the same thing is true even in our lives. And then we have the seraphim. Uh, these, are, these are interesting creatures when you study them. I'm going to give you verses. I'm not going to read them. I don't have time this morning to read you. But if you're a note taker, and, and you're, or you're interested in angels, I've done a lot of study for you. I just don't have time to give it all to you. So I'm going to give you the references. You can look them up yourself, and you'll see where I, I've got this. Seraphim were the worshiping angels. They're the ones who are in the very presence of God, and they surround the king 
and they're the they're the just the, the worshipers, right? And they're mentioned in Isaiah chapter six, verse two, verse three, verse six, and verse seven. The word means fiery ones, fiery ones. They're represented. They stand above the king as he sat upon his throne. They're ready to minister, and they use their, their key. They have six wings. Let's show that one. Kind of. Uh, there should be one there that has like a guy with six wings. Did you get that one in? Okay. It's a really cool one. It's really cool. And this is this. Oh, there he is. Uh, well, that's close. That's close. There he is right there. There he is. Now, I don't know whether he looks like, you know, this looks like kind of like a rock, rock concert guy with some wings. But uh, anyway, you know, I have to do the best I can while I'm doing this stuff. But this was the idea of a seraphim. And he had six wings, some covered his feet, some covered his face, and so on. You can read about it when you read those, those verses. And uh, they were the comforting and the they're comforting and protecting angels. Now listen to this verse, and uh, let's go ahead, let's look at this slide here, and there should be another one coming up right there. Alright? The angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Now, this word is not really in the, in the Hebrew is not in the in the singular. It's in the plural. Okay? So we have the angels of the Lord encamp around those who fear him. You see this man is sitting there uh, reading his Bible, trying to get ready to face the day, and it says the angels of the Lord encamp around him. So it's a beautiful picture. And uh, it says, for the angel of the Lord is a guard. Okay? He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Then we have the archangel. An archangel, uh, we know, like there's there's a suggestion that there could be more than one in Daniel, because uh, it talks about the archangels. But then in Jude, it talks about the archangel, and then in First Thessalonians, when it says the archangel shall stand out and blow his trumpet, right, the, the trumpet call of God. So let's go to the. Do I have a? No, I don't think I have that one. Do I? I don't think I have a verse or a picture. Well, what are you going to do? Do I have a that? Go to that next one. I think I know which one it is. Nope. Yeah. There. Right there. Okay. So here's kind of an idea of an archangel is a warrior, right? The warrior. Now, the archangel is the, think of him as the captain of the host, the one who rules all of them, okay? He's the one who is, if you ever read the books, and if you haven't read the book, you should read the book, but it's called This Present Darkness. And in This Present Darkness, Satan as you know, and his demons are out to get the, this little town and this preacher and everybody else and tells their stories. But God has his hosts, and the angel, the, the king angel, the, the, the prince angel is called Tal. Well, in that case, this case, it's Michael in the Bible, right? And Ra, uh, Raphar is the evil prince of darkness, right? So it's kind of a war against good and evil, and it's actually a story about what's really going on in our lives. So it's really good. But, um, it's the chief angel, and so just keep that in mind. And then here's the references. Verse, uh, it's referred to twice in, in the New Testament. First Thessalonians 4.16 and Jude 1.9. And then in Daniel chapter 10, there's a story that's kind of interesting. Uh, Daniel has a dream. This is an interesting story. Daniel has a dream, and, he, and it troubles him. And he doesn't understand this dream. <coughs> Pardon me. And so... All of a sudden, an archangel, or no, an angel comes and appears and gives him the message, and he said, Daniel, after you prayed for the interpretation, I was detained for 21 days by the prince of Persia, okay, the Satan, satanic rule, which by the way, nowadays is now modern Iraq and Iran. <coughs> Isn't it interesting that the prince of darkness rules in Iran and Iraq? Okay? Hello, Washington. Okay. Now, <coughs> So what happens is, he comes, he says, I was detained for 21 days. And he says, but then we called in Michael. And Michael uh, basically got the, got the message through and got through. So he called upon a hierarchy, a higher, stronger, bigger, more powerful chief angel, the archangel. So this just kind of gives us a little picture of uh, how these guys work. Remember what we said last week? Angels are mentioned 108 times in the Old Testament, 165 times in the New Testament. And boy, is it an interesting study when you study it. Now, the Scripture speaks about the creation of angels, all right? Uh, in, in Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6, 
and Psalms 148, verse 2 and 5. Okay? Again, I don't have time. But I will read this verse because hold on to your hat. Buckle up. If your wife is asleep, nudge her. If your husband's asleep, pull his beard or whatever, okay, his ears or whatever, right? His tie. Because you don't want to miss this piece I'm about to give you. This will, this is worth this whole sermon right here. Right? This is, I mean, I don't care if you're walking out after this. Don't miss this piece. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. Okay? For by him all things were created, both in the heavens, well, where do angels come from heaven? And on earth, visible and invisible. Well, the angels are invisible. There are spirits, ministering spirits. Okay? Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created by him and for him. And he is before all things. Now watch this. And in him all things hold together. All things hold together in Jesus. Okay? Now I, well, I'm going to give you a little health lesson here. Because this is just blowing your mind. In your body, there is a protein that is called laminin. Okay? Laminin is a protein. Go back there, Hannah, if you would. Go back one. No, never mind. Just leave it there. That's okay. Got ahead a little bit. Sorry. We laminin. Uh, this is this is what it looks like. Laminin is the protein that holds everything together in your body. It is the boss cell. It's the one that tells all other cells what to do and where to go. It's the rebar in the concrete. It's the rebar in the human body. It's what makes everything tick and work and hold together. And that's what that cell looks like. Does that blow your mind? Now, go to the next one, Hannah. This is a uh, uh, this is what they, they look like if you could break them down. And the DNA chain, the amino chains, and I'm not going to go into all the stuff, but that is the chain, that is the laminin in the body that holds all things together. Well, if that doesn't light your, your fire, your woods with, I'm telling you. All right? So, in Him, all things hold together. Well, how many angels are there? Well, the Bible doesn't really tell us how many there are, all right? But again, we know that they are among us, and they are among us by the millions, and here's a couple of scriptures. Daniel chapter 7, verse 10. And a river of fire was pouring out. This is kind of talking about the, the vision of the end time judgment. When God is bringing judgment upon the earth. And a river of fire was pouring out, flowing from His presence, millions of angels. And one version says, thousands upon thousands, times of thousands upon thousands. Ministered to Him, millions stood to, to attend Him. Millions. Right? Matthew 26, 53. Put away your sword, Jesus told him. This is when Peter wiped off the ear of that old high priest, right? Uh, he's aiming for his head, by the way. He wasn't going for his ear. But don't you realize, he said, I could ask my father for thousands or a legion of angels, a legion of 72,000, to protect us, and he would send them instantly? Don't you realize I could call thousands of angels? Just put your sword away. If I really wanted to defend myself, we could get it done. Okay? Pretty cool. Hebrews 12, uh, 22. Uh, Moses himself was frightened at the sight. <clears throat> and then he said, I am terrified and trembling. No, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless thousands of angels in joyful gathering. Okay. Um, so they, the other thing about angels is it appears that they were all created at one time. And because they don't die, they will be here forever. They're not like us, right? We'll talk a little bit about do we become angels, right? Do we, are we like Clarence? Do we get our little bell rung and all of a sudden we find Every time you hear a bell rung, an angel got his wings. It's Hollywood. It's not true. But you can see people go, uh -huh. and then, I mean, people that are just shallow in the Word of God to hear a bell ring, an angel got his wings. And uh, they take that stuff for, you know, whatever. All right? But angels are not subject to death and, and extinction, right? So they're, they're, however many there are, will always be. Do angels have bodies? Okay? Uh, let's see. So look at this. Here we have this ministering spirit that can take a form of anything or anyone. In Hebrews 1.14, uh, it says, and we do not have, they do not have physical uh, bodies like humans. He Hebrews 1.14, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to men to help those who will inherit salvation? They are for you and I when we give our life to the Lord. That's part of our inheritance as we get these angels to watch over us. 
And Jesus declared that a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see me have, Luke 24. Uh, but again, they can take on human form. Now, if they couldn't take on human form, we wouldn't have that verse that tells us, entertain, um, let me see if I can find it, Hebrews 13, 2. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some uh, who have done this have entertained angels unaware. So you help the old guy on the corner, or you see the little lady that needs help, or... You know, I saw a little gal in a store yesterday, and boy, she was just hurting and freezing cold, and I thought, I wonder, you know, you just wonder. Entertain strangers, because there might be an angel unaware. And when Jesus said, when you've done the least of these, you've done it unto me, right? So you never know when you might be dealing with an angel or doing something for the Lord, right? All right? So since angels are spirits, um... Rather than physical beings, they don't even have to be visible. Colossians 1.16 tells us that He created all things visible and invisible. They don't even have to be visible. Right? In my case, with, that, with the hand I told you about, He was invisible. Same thing with Elisha's situation. Um, <clears throat> do angels have wings? Uh, let's go to the next slide. And I love this. I love this slide. I love this picture. Look at this. Now, if you look at it careful, this is a little boy sleeping down here. And this angel is watching. This is like a guardian angel. I chose the picture because of the big wing, right? Uh, and the Bible does very clearly indicate that they some do have wings. We know the seraphim have six. But we are not told if they all do. But we are told they fly, right? Uh, but they are ministering spirits, so they don't necessarily have to have wings. And Hollywood has kind of made that for us, but we don't know. But uh, look at this picture and just imagine that's yourself or your husband, or your sick child, or whatever. Um, your daughter on a date, or whatever. We need an angel, right? Just watching out and looking over them, thank God. Many a time that we prayed this way over our children uh, when they were out late at night. So, Daniel 9.21 talks about the angels flying. Isaiah 6, 2 and 6 also talks about angels with wings. How do angels compare to human beings? Um, again, they never die, and that's a little different from us. Luke 20. Verse 36, uh, they possess superhuman intelligence and power. That's in Mark 13, 32, 2 Thessalonians 1, 7, Psalms 103, verse 20. They're stronger than man, but they're not omnipotent. They can't, they're not as strong as God, Psalms 103. Okay? Uh, greater knowledge man. 2 Samuel 14, 20, and the Lord is wise according to the wisdom of an angel of God. Okay? So we know they're extremely wise, and they know all things that are on the earth and going on on the earth. Right? Angels do not marry or reproduce, uh, Matthew twenty-two thirty. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor they give or given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Okay? And again, uh, no, human beings do not become angels. Human beings are human beings. We are the crown of His creation. Angels are created lower than us. Okay? They are just there to minister to us. Are all angels good? Okay? Some are classified as God's holy messengers, and I could give you several verses there. Uh, other angels oppose God, and they're under a different kind of leadership. Satan, right? Matthew 25, 41. 2 Peter 2, 4. Jude chapter 6, or verse 6. Ephesians 6, 12. And we often call them demonic spirits. So let's show that slide ahead. Okay, so it's kind of a scary-looking, ominous booger. And, uh, but there he is. And they are actually... Go to the next one, because I think this kind of tells them. Now, when I did the spiritual warfare series... Uh, we we had this uh, we talked about this war that's going on between good and evil in our lives all the time. This guy is down here with a chain on this side and this side over here. It's being broken. And so there's this unseen realm, this unseen battle that's real. If you want to know more about that, go back and listen to the series that we did on spiritual warfare. <clears throat> and uh, I want to tell you that little Forky Tail after that series, Forky Tail turned the heat up on me in my life like you've never seen before. So. Uh, just kind of know. Um, so what's their job description? What is the job description for an angel? What about that? Uh, we don't know if all angels carry out the same duties. We know that some have different responsibilities and there's a hierarchy. But we don't know, but we do know that they can all do things that whatever God asks them to do. So uh, here we have, I showed you Michael, and there should be another picture of him, I think. Uh, that just an artist's rendition of it, okay? And then we have, the, these are the two angels in the Bible that we're told about. 
Okay, we're told about Michael and we're told about Gabriel, right? Michael's talked about in Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, and Jude chapter 9, or verse 9. Gabriel is talked about in Daniel chapter 21. Go to the next slide, Hannah, and Luke chapter 1. That is also talks about Gabriel right there. Okay? And Gabriel um, was more, he was a, kind of the announcer, right? He's the one that announced good tidings of great joy and great peace and all of that. Okay, that's in Luke chapter 1, verse 19 and verse 26. Um, they are, they're one of their main jobs is praise and worship. Okay, they bring praise and worship to God. And again, I love this picture of that. They are, they are around the throne of God. They're worshiping and praising. That's the main activity that's going on in heaven. It's in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 3. Revelation 4, verse uh, uh, through 4 through 5. So we have, they are messengers. All right, and uh, we talked about the law of Moses. Look, they're also guiding angels. Uh, let's go to this. Uh, go to the next one. Yeah. They're the guiding angels. So these are the messengers. Okay, that's when they announce Christ. Next one. Now we have our guiding angels. Now here we have one of our feminine. You guys probably all remember this. Back in the when I was a kid, this was like a very popular picture in the rooms of so many children, right? And uh, here they're about to fall off into this creek, and she's kind of watching over them. But there are the uh, guiding angels. Should be another one there, I think. Okay. And if you can see that, there's an angel. Uh, this little guy's got his little sister on his back, and there's the angel guiding them along. I wonder how many times that happens in our lives without us even knowing about it. These angels are the ones who came to Joseph and said, this is what's going to happen. Right? And uh, guide us along our way. Then there's the providing angels. Well, I wish we had more time to talk a little bit about the guiding or providing angels. Uh, food for Hagar. Remember when she was off in the wilderness? And the baker, you know, the old little uh, Ishmael, he's out there crying his heart out. And it says, and God heard him crying. I want you to know, when you're off in the wilderness and nobody else is around, and nobody else gives a rip, it says, God heard the child crying. He knows your heart. And when everybody else rejects, there he is. And he sent an angel to feed them. Okay? And to take care of them. So there are providing angels. We can talk about Elijah and his temptation. And God sent the ravens, remember. And remember the story of uh, Eddie Rickenbach where they sent the seagulls and they ate the seagull and then they used the internal organs to catch the fish and all that stuff and they survived. Then there's the protecting angels. There's some that are protectors. That's their job. And we looked at that last week when we talked about the uh, Daniels. So the next one, there's the delivering angels. And that was this one where they deliver us from something that we can't even see is about to destroy it. Then, and I love this one, there is the strengthening and encouraging job of an angel. Okay, here we have this slide. A strengthening and encouraging that soldier, teaching you can run upon a troop, then there's another one. Here we have an angel that's just comforting this, maybe a homeless man, or uh, somebody doesn't, nobody cares about him anymore, and yet God is there. And then the next one, and I don't believe I shared this one with you next week, it should be a fireman, Hannah, go back. There you go. So then there's this fireman, and this is kind of a picture from 9-11 and an artist's rendition of this, and I love this picture because he's brokenhearted. He's at the end of it. He's seen too much. He maybe lost a lot of friends, but there's a comforting angel, and I've had that comforting angel right beside me so many times in my life. Uh, there's answering to prayer. They, a lot of times there are God's answer to the prayer. They will bring the answer. To the prayer, and that's it can be found in Daniel chapter 9, verse 20 through 24, uh, Daniel chapter 10, verse 10 through 12, and Acts chapter 12, verse 1 through 17. Caring for the believers at the moment of death, and this is the end one here. <clears throat> there are, if you look at this, it's kind of cool because she's in and she's coming down to escorting home, right? And we get this from the, the story of Lazarus and the rich man. And it says that when, um, it's in Luke chapter 16, uh, verse 22, it says the spirit that the angel drew, uh, carried him to the bosom of Abraham. When we die, we have, we have escorting angels that carry us to the bosom of Jesus, carry us to heaven. It's a beautiful picture. And so, will that be the last thing? And, and when Steve Jobs died, he said his last words were, oh wow, oh wow. Is that what he saw? Did he see his angel carrying him there? Or did he see him carrying him somewhere else? Um, we don't know. I don't, I don't know his heart. I don't know that story. But I can tell you that heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. 
If you're scared, you're not prepared. If you're, if you're prepared, God has a place prepared for you. It's a prepared place for prepared people. Are you prepared? Do you know the Lord Jesus? Do you know for a fact this morning that if you died, 